All right, guys, we're back again, working on the F1 honey. So trying to finish up some of the little details, some of the little, the piddly stuff. You know, the last 10% takes 90% of the time. You've heard it before, you know, I'll testify. It's, it's the truth. So today, we gotta get an ignition switch in this. So let me show you, let me show you what we're working with and uh, what I've came up with here. We have the stock Crown Victoria steering column and one of the points of this, or one of the goals is to not use this because let's face it, this steering wheel is ugly, all the plastic crap and pot metal, just, I mean, it's, it doesn't look cool. So factory, you know, got your shifter and your ignition switch goes, you know, right below here. But now it's right here. So I'll show you what I did. As you can see, I have completely, whoop, come here now. I have cannibalized. <laughs> I have just completely ruined the steering column, but what I did, so once upon a time, this piece here lived right here, okay? And your ignition switch goes in this side with the tumbler, and on the back side here, it's got a little plastic piece that screws in here, and it turns the tumbler that starts the, you know, starts the car, it's the ignition tumbler. So what I did is I cut this section out, this housing, if you will, kind of ground it down, gave it some shape, and also the ignition switch is removable, so I took it out and taped everything up so it didn't get, you know, junk and grind and dust inside of it. And yeah, I took it out. It had two little holes here, some little four millimeter holes. So I just made this real simple, quick and dirty bracket, as you can see here, to hold it, and I'll show you what it's going to look like. So what I did here is I took one of the existing holes, I think that was like a, I don't know, like a fresh air vent hole or something like that. I took and, you know, opened it up a little bit, put us a couple nut certs, boop, right there. So now, bracket will bolt there. Ignition switch will come right here flush with it. And I'm not gonna be able to do this one handed, but just trying to show you how it work and then our little plastic piece poop right here so so the next thing we got to do here in the front we got to get rid of these old and busted change it out for this new hotness anyone that's ever driven with these old steel beam headlights knows it's like a candle in the wind they're so dim that with the modern cars on the road one of them behind you will actually cast a shadow around your car or truck because these are just so dim so here's the little solution i found so I've got one here. These are just steel beam conversion lights. So they look like your regular old, you know, glass light, in which they are. They are still, they are still glass, but metal back, and you can put a modern bulb in it. So what we opted for is some of these four-sided LED Johnnies. Got a little, got a little turbo cool fan on the back. So yeah. We'll uh, post up a little, some screenshots here. These are just a little eBay units, nothing special. And this is gonna help us see a little better. I'll show you in a second what they look like. All right, well, you can see we got everything buttoned back up. Love the way these fluted glass lenses look on these replacement housings, I guess you call them now. Just look OE, you know, unless you're really looking for it, you probably wouldn't notice before you turn the HID bulbs on. But also got some new amber turn signal lenses and went with amber bulbs as well. Some people put clear, don't like the way it looks, so amber on amber, best way to go. So, that's what they look like. With these bulbs, they get a little brighter and a little more crisp as they warm up, if you will. And you'll hear just a little noise coming from the bulb, and that's just the fan. You know, that little twirly boy I showed you in the beginning makes just a little bit of noise, but once it's running, you can't hear it anyway. So, yeah, that's it for today. You know, that was a, that was a good hour a day so now we're gonna move on to the back and see if we can figure out some turn signals, but that's gonna be another hurdle for tomorrow. So we'll see it. Another day, another F100 project. We'll start with the first tool, little uh, skibbity pop. <sighs> Got done with my normal nine to five, time to do the fun stuff. So yeah, we're gonna work on uh, trying to get some tail lights going here. So. And tinker with a little bit, just you know, make a proof of concept here. 
that all this is going to work properly and I think it is so what we did we pulled out the original tail light holder socket bezel thingy and it had some weird like wire nut looking things from maybe the 70s on it I don't know cut that off and put some of these uh, GM style weather pack style connectors on them and now we're gonna have a good weather tight seal and I'm gonna show you real quick on one of these connections how to do it so this is what they would call the female side now we're gonna build a male side on this little piece you know little section of harness that I put through here like I said all this wiring was just brittle and breaking in my hand so fished a new uh, pair through here and show you how these how these connectors go together all right so first things first got to get the wires cut to the length same length this is just some random pieces that I had laying around we're gonna strip them back I don't know maybe three eighths inch I don't know whatever about that much get those guys stripped back first thing you do is you put on these little guys little weather pack weatherproof weather eliminating situations they just slide on the wire kind of kind of flush with the insulation there or something to that effect and you always put them with the little the flat end or non ribbed end towards the connector so that goes in there like that this being the male will take see if we'll focus in on these these little bullet looking connectors and just to give you an example so and that's what a female looks like inside the connector they do one of those so easy enough got the they take a specialty crimping tool this is the iwise iws 1424b uh, don't know if it's the best but it works just fine for me so if you look real closely it's got a section here this section that's going to grab the little green terminal little weatherproof section and then these little teeth here are going to grab the wire so you find your corresponding wire size and you set them up into crimpers you feed this through very carefully and you'll see the copper poke through right there and then you just give her a squeeze and that creates the crimp for the wire you take the crimpers you flip them and then right here you crimp the uh, weather seal so easy peasy get your little connector here and it has a little a and b on it you can just i don't know make up whatever you want that to be in this case i know that the green is the a which is the brake portion and the brown is the running light so we're going to make orange we're going to make that the brake because why not slide it in there and you'll hear a little click boop slide B in boop put the back on boom connectors done now you would obviously do the same on this side put the two together boom ready to go all right you'll have to excuse me for a little background noise here i tried filming this with no fan on and <laughs> man oh, let's just say i almost melted so got this wired up everything looks good here one thing to note these two wires one wire is for your running lights and one wire is for the brake light slash turn signal and the body of this housing itself just grounds well it's got two little screws right right so like here and there and they hold on to two little eclips and yeah that's all that grounds it so a lot of times these trucks will have intermittent like flashing tail lights or dim or whatever because everything is supposed to ground through these two little 
rust prone areas. So we're gonna do we're gonna do one better. So what I did, I ground off a little spot there, a little spot right in there, and I am going to make a little dedicated ground strap. It's real simple, quick and dirty, nothing crazy. Just a little piece of scrap wire. Yes, it's not black, but I know what it is. If anyone ever dig digs in here, will see it goes from there to there. And yeah, so if they can't figure that out, we're all in trouble. Simple little ring terminals, nothing fancy. We'll give that a little Little squish. Give other side a little squish as well. Now I don't know. One thing to note here: I don't know if this is proper or not, but this is what I've always done. So your crimpers are going to have, you know, the little up and down, right? When it crimps, right here. And notice all your terminals; they have a little split in the top. For whatever reason, if I'm paying attention, nine times out of 10, I always put the up at the bottom and the split at the top. Is that correct? I don't know. But I've been doing that my entire career and never had an issue, so maybe that's just an OCD thing. That's how I do it. So give that a little, little squeeze. Now these terminals are the ones that have the heat shrink made onto them, so get, give them a little heat. Sure to burn your fingers in the process. Just like that. Got yourself a little ground strap. Then all we're gonna do, which I'll need all my hands for this, but screw one side to the body and the other side to the tail housing and voila, you have a the ground that you can trust. So just a little bit of rubbing compound. You see the difference in the tail light lenses. Just takes a minute, a little more detail. You ready to test out this rear wiring and see how bad I did it wrong? Yeah. Here we go. Let's see. Let's turn, let's turn on the running lights first. Oh, hey, 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 hey. All right, now brakes. Yeah, buddy, we got brake lights. All right, well, there's my hour for today. You got turn signals or you, uh... Oh yeah, you want, yeah, let's try the turn signals. Gee, I, I just about got ahead of myself. Oh, look at that. She's a little, she's a little fast one. We got to work on that, but it, yeah, buddy. On today's 30 minutes a day, we're going to tackle one of those little projects that's been kind of staring me right in the face and I haven't felt like moving or doing anything with it because I kind of knew what I wanted to do, but thought it was kind of hokey, but I'm going to do it anyway. So let's try it out. What do we do with this guy? Obviously, the fuel goes in there now, not here. We don't want this big open hole. So, oh yeah, I already cut it off because it was in the way earlier. So, I got an idea. Let's follow along. All right, got her welded up. This is a regular little rust oleum on the outside. Put some chassis saver on the inside. You know, it's a little rustier inside. And uh, also, you know, if any water gets in, I don't want it to, to rust it. So now plug it back in the hole, boop, like so. And you already know we got the crown jewel for it.
Boom. <laughs> uh, I've always wanted to do that. I don't know if I actually like it or not. So let me know what you think. I don't have a gas cap for this. Uh, I'm not against buying one, but I don't know. It's just, this is kind of goofy and I kind of wanted to try it. So tell me what you think. But, All right, we're back. Another 30 minutes a day, even when you don't feel like it. I really wanted to go home and hang out on the couch and pet my cat, but <sighs> can't get these projects done if we don't work on them. So something simple, something quick, easy. <laughs> nothing about hot rod it's quick and easy but we're going to make a little bit of forward progress today so one of the things we have to do we have to get some sound deadening and some heat protection in this thing because what little bit i've driven around the parking lot it's already heating up the exhaust pretty good or excuse me the exhaust heating the floor up pretty good and yeah, it's kind of loud kind of tin canish in here so gotta get some uh gotta get some sound deadening down this is just this is made by a company, Silas. Silas, got off of eBay. I think this is a 36 square foot kit of eight millimeter. I use, I use that stuff, well, not necessarily always this brand, but it's the specs I use in most of the stuff. 36 square feet does a regular cab pickup truck pretty well. And yeah, I'm gonna knock it out. So it's probably boring. But in case you've never seen it, super simple, straightforward. Went through and seam sealed everything first, just regular black seam sealer. Got a couple little roller in installation application tools. Um, yeah, I just always like to find a nice square edge, like the back of this here. And I'll get, I'll get a sheet. square edge and I'm leaving probably a quarter inch gap to the edge for a future uh, seal plates and carpet and whatnot. Yeah, let's get your roller. Just roll it on. Now my apprentice Kaylee is way better than, this, me, than me. I was gonna get her to do this, but I figure I'll, I'll suffer through it instead of her. But yeah, just put it on like that. Make sure you get down in all the grooves really well. Work the tool around. Two different widths of rollers, so you can get it rolled in there good. You, you know, you don't want any air gaps in here because then it's not really doing its job. And. Yeah, you don't want any place that water can get up under it, so you just stick it down and slowly pull the backing paper away as you work your way across. Welcome back to another part of this video. I guess this has turned into the 30 minutes a day video because that's all I can seem to find right now. But hey, better than nothing. Today's project, you've seen that we got the dynamat in, and, or dyna, dynamat, we got the sound deadener in, and now it's time to put the seat in, but not the factory seat because that would be too easy. Like, let's take something we have to cut up, modify, and make work. So. Let me show you what we came up with. Came up with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> now why couldn't it falling over, falling over be in the video? 
All right, well, my, oh. Gosh darn it. Uh, gosh darn it. No, no cussing. That's Taylor. why I said gosh darn it. Come on, flip her up. There we go. Look, this adds to the character. All right. Taylor, you want to be the uh, seat model here? <laughs> All right, so. Drink a good seat model, Taylor. Here, we have 2016-ish F350 King Ranch. So, still a Ford seat. And yeah, I mean, two-tone brown. It's got a little, uh, uh, can we call wear on leather patina? Yeah, I call that patina. All right, it's got a little patina on the leather. All right, but here, my favorite part. Boop! Armrest with not beer holders. Boom. So, my thoughts here, and y'all have to just follow along with me. I had a local guy here in town that does great upholstery work, wanted $450 to recover my seat in a cool like imitation vinyl thing with a cool stitch pattern, which isn't bad, like totally fair, especially for his level of work, but it doesn't really meet the budget. So this seat Andrew bought for his C10 and it, it set real high in that truck, but with this truck having a flat four pan, it doesn't have that issue. This was $200. We get modern foam, armrest, cup holders for our not beers. And yeah, it's neat. It's real leather Yeah, it smells good. And I think it looks pretty cool. I was a little worried about it looking out of place in the truck or not fitting correctly. I've already like a little test fit. Uh, you'll get to see that in here in a minute. But I mean, just, just bear with me. Before you make any snap decisions or judgments, just just wait for the final product. Now I'll show you what I had to do to get it to fit. Cause it, were, it really wasn't that bad. So Andrew, he had, let me, let me flip this up here to its natural position it wants to sit in. So this bracket had came out and did something funky. I don't know, I actually didn't see this part. So Andrew had cut this off and it looked like a beaver had chewed it off. So I came in here and, and dressed it up and made it look a little better and cut the top of it out for our mounting holes. So we'll get two holes there. Same thing here, two holes and two holes. Now, the one thing I did have to get a little creative with is this bracket. You can see how it steps up. So this was flat and it caused a funny angle inside of the truck. So what I did for this bracket is I came in here and I sectioned it out here, down, around the back and drop that up about, uh, I think that was like three eighths of an inch, maybe quarter inch. And yeah. So now we'll show you how it fits. Yeah, it's pretty close. All right. Well, let's give it a test drive, Taylor. What do you think? Sure. You said test drive. Yeah, I mean, hey, look. Look how good this thing fits. I mean, it sits right here. Now, granted, we took the headrests off because, you know, they were goofy. But it sits right below that little lip. It's got a nice angle. I've got some little, like, half-inch spacers I'm putting under the front to give it just, eat, just a little bit of tilt. But, I mean, yeah. All in all, it's pretty sweet and cool little feature is on the passenger side. Rawr. You can flip it up in case you needed to put cases of not beers. Spare tires, drift tires. Mm. Cause we're gonna be cutting donuts in this sucker. Mm, I mean, we, we're gonna definitely be some donut cutting. Oh, uh, uh, that's right, you're gonna have some. Oh, and by the way, you can see, for those who remember, it used to be red. Now Taylor put his custom little touch of brown on here painted all that don't worry about these guys we're gonna to get to those so now it all kind of matches yeah. so i don't know if people That's have seen cool. this assembled but oh batteries unhooked oh bummer but yeah so ignition switch cigarette lighter that i haven't tested yeah so just plug it in all right well hey that's our that's our 30 minutes for today even though it was more like 13 minutes but Hey, get it in when we can. So, see you tomorrow, maybe. One thing we have to do is protect this leather. Keep it hydrated, moisturized, keep it looking beautiful, because if it ever were to crack or split or do something crazy, 
probably couldn't match it. So let's just take care of it while we can, while it's still looking good. Products, we're gonna use Leather Honey. They have a leather cleaner and a leather conditioner. And to be totally honest with you, their marketing it got me. It looks like something to be in an old barber shop or something, I don't know. So yeah, they got me with marketing, so we're gonna give it a try. It also had good reviews. I did, I did check it out online and only thing people had to say about it is it said it had a strong smell, but it doesn't really have a smell. I don't know. So saturate lint-free cloth, you give it a good scrub, you know, with the cleaner. And that's step one. All right, now that we went over all the seats with the cleaner, time for the conditioner. It's thick like honey. So let's give it a shot here. Apply a small amount of leather honey on a lint-free application cloth. Not the same one we use for the cleaner. Uh, thinly coat surface, above room temperature, no problem because it's hot. Blah, blah, blah. Allow a minimum of two hours for absorption, preferably overnight. It's late, so we'll just see how this does in the morning. See the difference here? Old, dry, crusty. Moist. Hmm. So, just show you, let's just show you firsthand how crazy this stuff is. So it says put a little there. Oh, oop, oh darn. Put a little over there too. It says a little goes a long way. These seats are dry. I'm pretty sure Andrew left these out in the weather before he gave them to me. Thanks, Andrew. And look at that. Now. I don't know if this, surely to goodness this shine will go away. It says leave it on and buff off excess, so I don't know, we'll see. But just look at that difference. Put a little on the boop, and a little boop. It's like shining an old pair of shoes. These little cracks here is extra dry. Let's just go ahead and give them the, the once over. And yeah, just like that. So it says leave on two hours, preferably overnight. Still gotta do this section, but yeah. Let's check back in tomorrow. F100, she's ready to go. Kinda, sorta. We've driven around the parking lot. It works. Don't know how it's gonna work down the road, but we're gonna find out today. Worked out some of the bugs and kinks. Yeah, see how it does, see how it drives, rides. Yeah, maybe get some good shots of it. Yeah, let's have some fun. All right. Here we go. I say on for size. Oh yeah. Big F100 guy. I tell you the, the the way that these seats fit in here and the way that they sit is so good. Like it's just you can just do the arm out the window, just straight flexing on them. Love the way this thing sits, so don't discount these seats. Here we go. Batteries. take it off and it's just sitting there so I'll pay attention to that. Nothing like 
going down the road for the first time in a truck that she built from nothing. Wow, this is so much fun. And it rides great. I totally expected it to because, I mean, it's a crown bit. These things, they ride great anyway, but man, this thing, yeah. This was, this was a good choice, a good shop truck. test drive I would call that success squeaks and rattles clicks and pops but hey we drove around for like an hour did some pulls rolling shots yeah did great still got a lot of little fine tuning to do but man she's a streetable hot rod at this point so we're gonna call that a success thanks for tuning in thanks for sticking around we appreciate it as always like share subscribe you know the deal see you